Mark chapter 9. Gospel second Mark. who didn't bring a Bible or do the projection there. And now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James and John and led them up on a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His clothes became shiny and seedily white like snow such as no land launderer on earth can whiten them. Verse 14 And when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them and scribes disputing with them. Immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him, greeted him. And he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son, who has a mute spirit, and whatever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and, and the, at the mouth, grashes his teeth and become rigid. So. I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered him and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him. And when uh, he saw him, immediately the spirit conv convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming uh, at the mouth. So he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood, and often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to those who believe. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with, the te with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came run together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to, the, to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. And the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly and came out of him and he, he became as uh, one dead so that many said he is dead but Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and uh, he arose and when he and had come into the house his disciples asked him asked him uh, privately why could we not could not cast it out. So he said to them, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. My brethren, the Lord s said that this month of June, he set it aside so we could pray for the families. It was for us a month of great victories because we were able to testify that each visitation that was done a great blessing God has operated in that home. Not only on the home that received the, the vi visit, but also in the homes of those who went to do the visit. Greatly, the Lord has protected us. And He has blessed us. And it, it is very 
gratifying when we do this kind of work because we are propagating the gospel and salvation in Jesus proclaiming the blessing of God deliverance and it is very important for us as a church because it generates love right it generates unity it generates the desire to pray for the homes for the brethren and the more we pray for one another the more we will be blessed the stronger spiritually we will be spiritually speaking and it has been a great concern of the Lord with the church is to keep this uh, spiritual environment we can never have this moment only in the month of June but this has to remain with the church because the more we seek the Lord the more the doors are going to be open and quicker the time passes by and soon we will be with the Lord because the enemy is surrounding us he is out there surrounding us isn't it? he's trying when he sees a gap uh, he sees a gap and he enters when he sees uh, an open door he enters and when he enters he does serious damage and this is what happened with this, ho this family when we see here the picture we see some a scene that was very weird Jesus was in the, on the mount he had called Peter, John James side and he went up to the mount with them and the other nine they remain in the valley and when Jesus comes down with the three and meet the nine we see a situation that is very frustrating to the nine that had remained and you see the difference that is in remaining being in a valley and being in the mount for well, sure this is oppression of the Lord but we have been speaking about mount and valley we spoke yesterday about valley and about Jesus lily of the valley a few days ago we spoke about Isaac that went up with his father Abram to the mount and that was a place of adoration a place where Isaac was supposed to be and in fact the life of the servant our lives is a life of mounts and valleys mounts and valleys those are not my words those are words of the Lord want to see let's open the Bible and do Deuteronomy Deuteronomy 11 11 Deuteronomy 11 11 But the land which you cross over to possess is a land of hills and valleys which drinks water from the rain of heaven. A land of, for which the Lord your God cares. The eyes of the Lord your God are always on it from the beginning of the years to the very end of the years. See there, when the people came out of Egypt, the, the land that Cana, land of Cana, is a land of mountains and valleys. That's why our lives, and spiritual life, is like this: mountains and valleys. Today you are in the blessing, you're fasting, you are praying, you are listening to the voice of the Lord, and there will come a time when you, we will have to be in the valley. The disciples there, the three that were with Jesus, with the Lord Jesus in the mount, what did they see in the mount? They saw, we read here, Jesus 
transfigured with his robes, very white, like snow, like no, like no one else could ever make uh, this white. And they saw the 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 glory of God. The mount is for this. Who is the mount? Who is in the presence of God? Who is hearing the voice of God? And seeing a vision of what is eternity? What is the spirituality of God? What is the grace of God? Which is the mercy of God? Who is in the mount? Is seeing the glory of God. He's seeing the holiness and the perfection of God. Who is in the mount sees this. Who is in the mount is away from the world and close to the Lord. This is biblical. He's here in the Word. There they saw Jesus with the body transfigured, yeah. Uh, a shining body. Jesus practically there. What they were going to see in daring revelations. But when Jesus comes down with the three and meet the nine that remain there in the valley, that was a terrible scene. Because there was a father, they had a, a struggle inside of his house, a son a youth that from his youth from the time he was born had a spirit of the enemy he was possessed the child was deaf and mute and when Jesus comes down they meet the disciples defeated frustrated because they try to to spell the enemy, but they were not able. So now we see a situation very different from the one that the other three had seen, because the valley is like this, in a valley. It is different uh, from the mount in the valley. We will only see defeat in the valley. We only see disappointment, frustration. In the valley, we will see that the evil, most of the time, is victorious. But it is necessary to have a position, a spiritual position, to be in the valley. That was the difference. You cannot want to be in the valley without being prepared to face the valley. That was the greatest difference of the ones, the three that were with Jesus uh, compared to the ones that remained in the valley. The enemy had invaded the house of that man. He had destroyed practically the peace that was in the, his home, the joy in his home. The enemy had, had done already the damage. That man, when he takes that child to the presence of Jesus, the Lord Jesus, was because he could not handle it anymore. And now he, Jesus, when he meet, you know, the other versions and other gospels, the Bible says that the child was uh, a lonely, uh, single child. That man had only that child, so you can imagine. A child is born, a child with this great difficulty that nobody could help, no, no doctors of that time, no one. Now imagine the situation of that father. He didn't know when, when the, the child was going to be possessed, he had to be wait be waiting and it comes some time the child is thrown on the fire or on the water that man 
or spent his life uh, up to that moment trying to diminish the pain that he was feeling, the pain of the family, and even the pain of the son. But comes to a m there comes a moment when he could no longer be able to deal with it. When the child was small, uh, when at the beginning it was, that's all right, the child has convulsion, convulsions, you can hold the child, but come to a point when you lose control of the situation, he was no longer a child, he was a youth, he was practically a man. The father had no strength to contain. And the Bible tells us that the enemy had already been victorious. The child, the parents, for sure the doctors, the neighbors, and now the enemy was defeating the nine apostles that were there. And they were asking Jesus, what happened? Where did we fail? Where is our flaw? And what did Jesus tell them? What was the flaw of the disciples that remained? What, what did they lack? Prayer and fasting. What, what you know what you guys were missing prayer and fasting my, my brethren when we are in the mount when we are in the presence of the Lord you don't need to fast and pray you're in the mount you're in the glory of God the Lord is speaking to you you are in a, you live in a moment where everything is blessing there is no, no there's no bad service there's no praises that you don't like, there's no word, there's no assistant that is not from the Lord, nothing, nothing that the enemy may want to place in your mind, he will be able to, and you block, and you, you, nothing will block the fellowship that we have with the Lord. You're in the mount. The situation of the disciples, they were there, they saw the glory of God, but the nine that, that were in the valley, when we are in the valley, we have to fast and pray. We cannot get the, the disciples were neglecting their spiritual life. They were not denying. The denying was one thing. Is neglect is something else. They were getting. Uh, they, they were allowing what was spirit to become uh, something common in their lives. There are many people that do this. They neglect their spirituality. They think that they don't need to pray. They think they don't know, need to go to early dawn or read the Bible or come to the service. Think that just because of the fact that you are part of a denomination or of a church, you, you're all right with God. In the same way, there are many homes that are out there having the same situation of this home. Homes where they are being destroyed, where there is no joy, where there is no peace, where there is no, no joy in being inside of a home. But the Church of God, the ones that are called disciples of God, the apostles of God, of God the ones that are the ones that will believe in Jesus, we need to be on, the, on prayer, pleading, and sanctification to the Lord. And the disciples ask, why? Why this? Because it was lacking spirit, uh, prayer and fasting. My brethren, the power of God, the power of God is only manifested in the life of the worker when he is in prayer and fasting. And, and there are Bibles that don't have fasting and there are Bibles that don't have fasting and and prayer. If your Bible don't don't have fasting and there are versions that don't have fasting and prayer. There there are versions that that just have prayer. Matthew thirteen says exactly this. If your Bible doesn't have fasting and prayer, you need to immediately look for another Bible to read, to learn, because there are versions 
that are distorting is not the flow of the, the word but the mistake of the man trying to change the word of the Lord the power of God is manifest in the life of man through the faith isn't it? You, ne you need to believe then God will operate if you have faith that God can cure someone God will cure that person you can impose the imposition of hand you can pray and you can ask the Lord and he will cure but the power of God that the faith that pleases the Lord has to be maintained and watered with prayer and fasting otherwise we were just going to be one of the disciples we're just going to be simply have a title of a pastor or a title of a, a woman ahead of the group or a title of a, a work or a member of a group a praise group a member of a intercession group but if you don't have your life spiritual life being watered with prayer and fasting my brother your prayer it's not going to have the effect that we were expecting it to have that you expected it to have you're not going to stop being a worker you're not going to stop being a pastor you're going to stop being a member of a church but many times you're going to be frustrated many times you're going to be defeated I'm telling this to the church because disciples said asked where have we failed because we are not, play, not playing of church we cannot play with church we cannot play like we, we are that like you were connected to a denomination to an insti uh, evangelical institution no it doesn't exist the, the matter here is serious it happens on a daily basis the enemy of our souls he acts day on a daily basis in, in the life of people in the homes trying to steal the blessing of God and we as a church we receive people like this every day that's why if we want to have the operation of the Holy Spirit in our midst if you want to be an instrument for the honor and glory of the Lord my brother and sister fast and pray don't wait Oh, uh, for the church to say hey, this is a month of the fasting but uh, this week is a week of uh, early dawn this is a week of the fasting don't forget the fasting from until 9 o'clock on Sundays don't, do, don't leave off of this only but make fasting and prayer for your life and for your home to a marriage for a spiritual life fast and pray individually independent of what is revealed here for the church as a body if you want to be a life where God will operate through you if you want, want to be a, a vessel in, for the honor and glory of the Lord fast and pray you don't have to change your voice you don't have to make an intonation of voice you don't need to make this some people out there that, oh God this is not power if you want to have power from the Holy Spirit from power from God pray and fast that's why as church we have to do this you don't have to change your voice to speak in tongues you don't need to do any of it in the silence but because the glory of God the faith it doesn't come from inside of us the faith comes from God and reaches our hearts and in the process of as you seek the Lord as you pray and fast this faith is it, it becomes visible and it pleases the Lord we don't please the Lord because we're good because we have a deep voice because we speak in tongues no we please the Lord when we are vassals in the hand of the Lord and the faith that he gave us is efficient is when the Lord operates when we are prepared in the position to be used by God that's the difference that's why he said to the disciples there was they were missing fasting and praying 
there's no spirituality. They were with Jesus. They knew they were preaching on Jesus. They knew what Jesus was doing, but they were neglecting it. They thought that being with Jesus was everything. And in fact, it is. When we are with Jesus, it's, that's everything. But there are moments in, in which Jesus will be in the mount and you will be in the valley. There are moments in which you will be in your trial, in your difficulty, in your daily life, in your home, or wherever you are. But you need to have a life of prayer and fasting. Because the disciples that were with him, they were in a blessing. Because Jesus was present. But when Jesus came, he saw the scene, that picture was so difficult for the disciples. And now Jesus, yes to the Father. Yes to the Father. For how long? For how long is it been happening? And from the from the birth, and my now my brother, now for the fathers, for the parents. There are situations in our lives that we need to identify the, the mistake, the sign. We need to identify, identify the signs of the evil. The parents need to identify the path that the children are taking from the beginning. Don't, al don't allow it to. Don't allow it, the situation to don't think it's normal if you see that your child is from early age that he is deaf he is doesn't speak doesn't ac accept advice doesn't s accept conversation he doesn't accept you to speak with him uh, or that he doesn't accept that you correct him that you, he doesn't accept that the Lord speak with him that he doesn't accept the, the path of the Lord he doesn't accept to hear the voice of God that he has some rejection don't, don't try to make this uh, repair alone. Seek the help of the church. Seek spiritual help. Don't allow the situation to progress. You know why? Because when it, it is at the beginning, you, you know, it's, uh, it's so, so cute, no? It's a rebel, but it's a young child. If, if a child does that, no, he doesn't allow us to pray for him. That's normal. But when he, he goes up, he is going to uh, he is going to accept. He is going to have personal experience. Many parents do that. They think it's normal. A child, two year old child, does not accept prayer. Does not accept to kneel down. They think it's normal. The child is deaf and mute. The child could not hear anything that was of the Lord. It was closed child try that they accept the instructions of the Lord. There are children like this inside of a house of Christians. They are living in their own world where the enemy is already controlling. That's what you see on the world out there. Parents, they are saying, look, my son, I don't know if he is going to be he or she. When he comes to a certain age, he'll decide. Have you heard that? People like that. Parents, they're allowing the children six, seven years old decide if they're going to be a boy or girl. It's such an absurd. This uh, goes against the Bible. This is terrible. It doesn't exist. This is not normal, my brethren. We as a church, cannot see this as something normal. This is nor normal in the world. It's in any world. This is abomination to the Lord. We cannot close our eyes to this. If you are struggling with your child, if you are trying to preach to him and show the path of the Lord and there was a rejection, seek spiritual help. This child needs to receive imposition of hand. This child needs to be to receive help. Don't try or to close your eyes, thinking that everything will resolve on its own, or 
don't try to fix the problem you're on your own. Seek help. Because when it comes to 13, 14, 15 years of age, well, it's over. Then you have any control over it. You don't have control over the situation. That was the situation with this man. It was the situation with this man. You don't think that he was... No, he was not a servant. You know why he was not a servant? Jesus asked him, what happened? And he said, hey, since he was a child, he lives like this. He has his convulsions. The enemy throws him to the, the water and the fire. And that's what the enemy does. If you are not doing the right the spiritual thing and bring your family to live experiences in the Lord, if you don't teach your child to give worth to this moment here, you will run into a great risk because the enemy is going to teach you terrible things. He's going to throw you to the water and the fire, the water of sin and, and the, the dirty water that is in the world or in the fire of hell and the addictions and where you will be burned even more away from God. If you don't do the part that God instructed to you, God placed a responsibility on you to guide your child to be walking on the path of the Lord. Yeah, don't, don't think that bring my child to a Sunday school at 10 30 in the morning is very difficult it's very difficult for this child he wakes up early every day 10 30 in, on Sunday is very difficult right yeah that's difficult don't bring him and you see when you're sorry about the child is in the right age to be thrown to the fire and the water the enemy has this the enemy came to destroy, to kill, and he is being victorious. If you feel sorry for a si child, if you have this kind of feelings, is because you're neglecting your spiritual life. If you are, if you want to spend a little time in in bed and not come to early dawn, is because you're neglecting your spiritual life. Don't come here to to sing songs or to. Pray for someone here because you'll be praying for yourself and praying, sing for yourself because you are not having a life of prayer and fasting. You're not watering the faith that the Lord placed in your heart. I'm not saying that you're not going to heaven. It's not it. One thing has nothing to do with the other. We may go to heaven without praying for anybody. We can go to heaven. We do imposition event to anybody. You may go to heaven with that were ever going to a pulpit and preaching, you can. But if you want to be an instrument for honor and glory of the name of the Lord, if you want to see the power of God, if you want to be the enemy being defeated, if you want to see the infirmity being expelled, if you want to see people being cured by God through your life, prayer and fasting. Yes. Yes, you can read. Second Peter 2, 7, 8. The pastor is saying, people think that everything is normal. God, God is love. This is wrong. This is wrong. Don't allow this. Don't allow this evil to enter into your home. Don't allow it. It's no normal. Don't allow this, this curse, this teaching into your home. Don't allow this. Pray and fast so that the Lord may deliver you, your child, your family, who is under your control. And now, when Jesus asked the Father, and he begins the dialogue with the Father and with Jesus, and asked Jesus, Can you do something 
please do. You see this? You see the lack of belief in him? If you can do something, in verse 22, for if you careful, if you can do something, have compassion on us and help us. This man was so defeated. Here, uh, first he, he brings the child to the disciple of Jesus to pray for him, and the disciple were not able to to spell the enemy. And I said, "Where am I going to? What else can I do?" And then he tells Jesus, "If you can do something, please do." There are people like this. People there are feeling that they have been defeated by everything. Because they enter into church and church they are cold. Church they have they clap, they have all of this, they have great great praises, they have a, a great structure, but they don't have what is most important, which is spirituality. They don't have the power from God. They don't have operation of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because people are neglecting their spiritual life. People are exchanging what is appearance, what is beautiful, great praises, a lot of instruments, loud, all of this wonderful thing, thinking that this is good. They think that this is enough. And, and they enter into the church, people enter into the church and leave frustrated, frustrated and disappointed with the gospel and with everything. And then, then they look to Jesus and said, if you can do something, please do. And what and 23, then the Lord, the Lord will, that if you can do, please. If you, if you can believe, then if there is any, a little bit of faith in your heart, is, do you think that there is a little bit of faith in your heart? You do, just need to believe a little bit. Not much. So if you, if there is any faith in your heart, everything is possible to those who believe. Can you imagine what blessing? Our bread in our lives as a church, our spiritual life, we cannot agree with what is apparent. We need to see results. We need to live in, in an environment where there are results, spiritual results. Results of the operation of the Lord. Results of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in our lives. You need to see it in, in our life, in your homes. You, are you being victorious or are you being defeated in your home? You see the enemy being victorious. You see the situation getting out of control. Seek help. Bring your family to the service. Bring your child to church. Ask for imposition of hand. Don't be ashamed. There's nothing like there's no shame. It's better now that he's small, that you have control, you have authority. You can still force, you can still hold him on because tomorrow everything will be lost. You will not have faith anymore. You no longer believe in anything. You no longer see beauty in the gospel. You don't see anything in the gospel. You have your life completely shaken. God speaks and you don't feel it. God speaks to you and you don't believe that God. You don't understand that God is speaking. God reveals to you, gives you a dream, and you think, oh, you, is it possible that God is speaking to me? When you came to this point where we are like this man, if, if you can do, please. To me, everything is... Then Jesus asked, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with, with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Yeah, we are like this. We believe with unbelief. Man believes in Jesus with unbelief. Man believes in Jesus. He said, 
hey, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. We are like this. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, the spirit left, and and then the spirit left, and the child was like he was dead. And everybody thought that he was the child was dead. The world out there thinks that our children in the presence of God they are dead. The world out there they think our children, when they are in the hands of God, when they are meeting Jesus, because there was a meeting between the Son, the deaf and mute, the only son of that man with the son Jesus the deaf and mute with the son of God as a word of God as the power the word of power as a voice of voice of many waters as a ear that can hear our prayers this is the son of God as a word of God it's a verb and as the child could not hear or speak anything but Jesus with his voice he speaks to our hearts and Jesus with his with his words he delivers man he, he breaks the enemy he ordains our victory he sh shuts up the enemy he does what he can do he, he is able to do to prepare us to go to heaven to the world he's dead a child, a young child going to church at three years of age, going to church and singing. What a weird thing. The world thinks like that. <coughs> but we are really dead. We are dead to this world. We are dead to evil, believe, uh, life in Jesus. And when Jesus, when Jesus took him by the hand, he got up and the name of the Lord was glorified. My brethren, that's what the Lord has for us as a church and as a family. We cannot accept to bring our families to a, a cold church. Don't do this. Don't accept this. Pray to the Lord. Let's pray for our church. Pray for the church of the work of the Spirit, what the Lord is speaking, so that we, we see the, the power of the Lord manifest. Not like the uh, the human emotion we can have this but what is most important that we have the power of God but for this you need to individually pray for the Lord if you want to continue to be a worker you want to be used by the Lord pray so that the Lord use your, your life with power and you see the result because God will operate God will honor who honor your name he will honor your prayer you honor your request not because you're good but he, because you are living on the mount you're reflecting the glory of God the glory is for God the, on, the honor and glory is for God we don't need a pastor we have it's mentioned very many experiences here where people have experienced with the Lord miracles children that were resurrected from the prayers of father and mother and the pastor didn't even go there it's good that the pastor doesn't go there because the honor is to the our God if you want to have victories in your home and the church do this pray to the Lord so that he may prepares to live moments like this the best best place for us to be in the mount so. let's sing a song
Let us stand up, my brethren. The text in Matthew 17, 21. It speaks of the prayer and fasting. There are versions that don't speak prayer and fasting. They say only prayer. This version is a wrong version. If ever this version, try to find another one. Because the prayer, the prayer, he takes man to a place where he cannot go. Prayer takes us to a place where we cannot go. It brings us to the glory of God. When we pray, we are going to the Lord. And fasting is, conf is you confessing to the Lord that you depend on God. The fasting is when you overcome the flesh and when you deny yourself, and you desire, uh, deny the desires of the flesh and you're confessing to the Lord, Lord, I need the resources of grace. I cannot be victorious on my own. Prayer and fasting do, do this. Together, the enemy is reproached. And by faith, the faith for us is everything. Faith, and there is a text in 1720, it says the following. Because of your lack of faith, if you have fa faith like a seed and mustard, I tell this month that from, from, go from this place to the other and it will be and nothing will be impossible to you. You see? If you have faith being uh, maintained in the base of prayer and fasting and you pray for this person the sick and this person will be cured because God gave to us this authority and Mark sees the Lord has given the authority to the disciples to spell the demons, but they have forgotten. They didn't exercise the faith, the genuine faith, the true faith that comes from God. That's why we need here as a church, as brethren, as a group, to begin to live moments like this, where the Lord will pray cures, miracles. We are we have many brethren that need a blessing from God. Yesterday we have been a um, uh, sister spoke to us saying that she was diagnosed with cancer. Aurelia, please pray for uh, Sister Aurelia. She's beginning a treatment now, a couple of weeks. Very quickly she needs to receive a, a treatment. Aurelia, she's always on fighting, uh, fighting with the uh, try with the son and the home what the Lord is going to be bring give her victory because she brought that subject to the church we, we as a church are going to pray and the Lord will operate now we have other situations sister Renata people need all the blessings by the Lord my brother we're not here pray playing church we cannot have this kind of understanding the Lord has given us a authority ever authority from the Lord we just need to act according to what is the true eternal gospel. You know this gospel that we see out there being preached in the world. It is eternal gospel. The ones that were proclaimed to John in Revelation. Amen. You have faith for this? A little bit of faith? We have faith. Everything is possible for the one who believes. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. We thank you for the teaching, Lord. That brought us closer to you, Lord. Thanks for the service, for everything you have done. So now let's pray for the children. It's a great joy to have the children here in the house of the Lord. This for us is everything for a parent, for home, having a child being raised in the gospel. This is a great, great satisfaction. There's no price, my brother. There's no price. Be here looking at our children growing, being musicians, guide, 
choosing their lives uh, after hearing, come to a certain age, and uh, you see our children here playing instruments, serving the Lord, conducting praises, preaching the word, and doing visits. There's no price for a parent, for a mother. When I said a father, I said parents. There's no price in the world that can pay for this. One of the dickens may pray. Amen. Glory to Jesus. In the grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. If somebody want, needs a prayer, we are here at your disposal. Peace to the Lord to everyone.